What's up everyone? I'm Travis and you're watching Upgraded RC. Well, welcome to tech tip number two guys. In this video, we're going to be discussing waterproofing our electronics. So we're going to take our Spectrum SR515 receiver here, which is not waterproof, and we're going to add some Holmes Hobby silicone conformal coating to make it waterproof. So making sure everything is waterproof in your RC is a huge part of your RCing adventures. Let's face it, electronics are expensive, and if you get something wet that is not waterproof, at least you're going to have glitches, um, you're going to have shorts, you might even burn up your ESC or your receiver or both. It's not a good idea. And don't get me wrong, guys, I'm not one of these guys that's going to go out and drive around on the floor of a pond and look at rocks. And if you are one of those guys, good for you. I definitely would recommend putting some conformal coating on if you're going to do that, though, or your electronics won't last very long. Now, almost everything you buy today comes waterproof. You can see it right on the side of the ESCs and the servos. They all say waterproof. That's awesome. I like these Spectral SR515 receivers. They're great. They've been around for a while. Unfortunately, they didn't waterproof them when they came out. They are still not waterproof. So no big deal. We're just going to put some conformal coating on there and uh, it'll be good to go. Now, for those of you guys who don't know about conformal coating, it's also shock resistant. So this is going to add a certain amount of shock resistance to our receiver. Well, say you take a hard fall off a rock or something like that it's not going to be near as protected as if you have the conformal coating on, which is holding everything together and kind of like this, this glue or this epoxy, so to speak, so nothing can really move around. So it's way more than waterproofing, guys. It's also shock-resistant coating. Yeah, there it is. Just so you know, this is extremely flammable. So do this in a very well ventilated area. You also don't want to really do this in any place uh, less than say 50 degrees. So don't go outside in your shed in the winter when it's 30 below zero and do this in there. It's probably not going to dry very well. Like I said, make sure you're in a very well ventilated area. So you don't want to breathe these fumes and don't go lighting a cigarette or popping your lighter off or anything right after you've done this next to it. The fumes are extremely flammable that's also very toxic. So I don't think I would probably ingest any of this or don't get it in your eyes. That'd probably be, I'm assuming that'd probably be pretty bad too. So I went over to some of the safety rules here. Next thing you're gonna wanna do to protect your table or your mat, you're gonna, and this is quite big guys, but you're gonna want a piece of cardboard in case you spill it or make it a little bit of a mess. This is kind of like epoxy, so when you get it on there, it's not coming off very easily. Next, you're going to want your conformal coating. You're going to want your sock or your rag to wipe up a mess if you make any. You're going to need a very small screwdriver. I think this is a zero, I'm not exactly sure, but that is for the little tiny Phillips screws right here on the bottom. You need to remove to separate this and get it out of the plastic housing. And then I would also recommend using some of, uh, this came off of uh, old servos, it's the, uh, the servo connector here on the end, I can't remember what the name of that jack is, but uh, if you put those jacks over your ports, then you won't get any conformal coating in the ports, which really screw things up. I'm gonna explain that here in just a second. So let's go ahead and very gently remove these two Phillips screws here so we can split this in half and pull our plastic off. There's also, you may or may not have a sticker on what you're doing. Mine's got a sticker on here. You could take a razor blade and split that down the center. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it. I'm not really a sticker guy. It tells me which model number it is and I know which model number it is.
All right, don't lose your little screws. Put them somewhere so you don't lose those. Go ahead and crack the back off here. And then we're going to very gently feed our antenna wire through this hole in the plastic very gently and then pull out our piece. There you go. Here is our circuit board. We will be adding the conformal coating to. We're going to do both sides. So here's our circuit board, guys. And if you notice, I'm using a wooden toothpick here to point things out. If you use a, a metal pick or anything metal like that, or it's possibly got magnetized somehow and you're touching your electronics, that would be really bad. So make sure you use wood or something like that. Also, don't try not to use your fingers or anything. The oil on your fingers is also really bad for electronics. So just try to be careful and move it around with a toothpick or grab it by the antenna wire. You can touch it, but just be careful and make sure your hands are fairly clean before you do. Now, when we put our conformal coating on here, guys, I want to show you something. Right here, there is a button. Okay, this is the button that you push to go ahead and connect or bind to your receiver. We want to make sure that we don't get any of our conformal coating anywhere around this button or touching the button itself or anything because it's going to dry and then the button's not going to go up and down very well. It's not going to work out too good for you. Take your time and put this exactly where you want to with the brush. Okay, so stay out of your button and stay off of these JR jacks here, which what I'm going to use is I've got a couple of these old uh, servo connectors here, these JR housing connectors, and I'm just going to go ahead and put them right on top of all of my connectors here, all of my ports, all these jacks, so that none of these get anything on them. So for all you guys that want to know what the part number is, it is H H. B C O N C O A T. This is made by Holmes Hobby. It is their conformal coating. This is the silicone. It doesn't say it on here, but this is their silicone version. And right on our little bottle right here that looks like nail polish, it says waterproof. So there you go. Let's go ahead and open this up. We'll see what we got in here. We got our little bottle of, looks like nail polish, but this is our conformal coating. And then they also gave us some instructions in here. Now, I already know what's going on. You guys can read through the instructions if you want to, but, oh look, even it says right there in instructions. This is an industrial silicone product. It's meant for production waterproofing. Okay, so there you go. And it says right here too, to uh, use in a well-ventilated area after you put it on, you're supposed to wait 30 to 60 minutes for it to dry. Then you can turn it over and repeat the process on the other side. All right, let's get after it. Now, the, the brush that this comes with is pretty big. It might be just fine for doing the back side, but I'm kind of worried about around that button. So I'm going to go with a lot smaller brush here, about this size, just some paint brush I had that's random. Um, it's already kind of frayed. so. I'm just going to throw this away after I'm done because it's probably going to be ruined. But that's how I'm going to go ahead and get around these parts here, around this button and around everything else as well. All right, here we go. And keep in mind, this is very, very thick. So gentle when you're putting it on here. Okay, so I think we got it coated pretty good, and we were careful to keep away from our button and our JR housing jacks there. Um, I coated everything else pretty good. Let's go ahead and let this dry for about an hour now. Okay, so we got our front side done. I waited just past an hour to make sure it's dry. Now we're going to go ahead and flip it over and do the back side. And I'm going to go ahead and use the brush that's in our 
little bottle here now is a little bit bigger and there's nothing really to be concerned about on the back side. Just make sure it doesn't run to the front side and get into our button or any place else you don't want it to be. All right, so we're going to coat this pretty liberally, liberally. <laughs> and uh, I'm actually going to come this direction and then I'm going to come back and go this direction. I want to make sure it's coated good from all different ways here. That way you can get all the different sides. All right, I think that's pretty good. Okay, we'll go ahead and let that sit and dry. So if you feel you got it coated pretty good, the instructions say you only need one coat to really protect your electronics. So after you feel you got it all good, go ahead and let it sit and dry. I'm gonna let mine set for about two hours just because I don't want it the coating sticking to the inside of my case, then it's coming off your electronics and it's kind of like, why'd you do it anyway? Well, that is it guys. I hope you enjoyed this tech tip number two on our conformal coating and waterproofing of electronics. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment down below and ask. I will get back with you. It may not be right away, but I promise I'll get back with you. You could also go to our upgraded RC Facebook page and leave a comment there. I might answer your question. Maybe somebody else will answer your question. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and join the upgraded RC Bashers, Crashers, and Crawlers Facebook group. Then you can see what everybody on there is doing. I might answer your question. Somebody else might answer your question. You can post pictures. You can post video. You can see what everybody else is doing. Maybe grab some of their ideas and run with it as your own. Um, it's a pretty cool group. I'm very happy with it. We just got going and it's starting to snowball already. So that's a great place to go if you've got any questions or if you're just bored and want to cruise around a little bit and see what everybody else is doing. Until then, guys, until our next video comes out, I am Trevis. You're watching Upgraded RC. Peace out!